Hi everybody, in this video we are going to go over C++ operators. And operators are a way to do, to do things in C++ such as basic math operations. So I'm going to start off by declaring a basic int and call it int number. And I'm going to sign it to 1, don't forget my semicolon. So the first operator we're going to learn about is simply, we know we, ha we, can, add thi we can add things, we can subtract things, my bad. We can subtract things, we can multiply things, we can divide things. But there are quicker ways to do things other than number equals number times 60. So um, a shortcut of this is to simply, do, instead of doing this, I can say number times equals 60 and no double equals. I can say, so that will take number, that's what the equals there, it takes number, times it by 60, and then sets it back equal to number. So I don't have to worry about, worry about that. Make sure the operation is before the one equal sign. So you, and you always want to think of one equals, just one, as kind of an assignment operation. And you want to go from right to left. So number times 60 is assigned to number. So as you can see here, uh, times equals is a shortcut for multiplying something, but I can also do plus equals, which is a shortcut for adding something, would be the same as this, or I can do subtraction equals, which is the same thing, and just for uh, fun, let me see, I'm going to see out number, just to um, make you guys believe me. Okay. And I also have to remember to set number back to 1 over here so that it doesn't get subtracted by 60 twice. And if I run this program, hopefully I don't get any bugs. I get negative 59 both times because I'm minusing by 60 in both scenarios. So I can do addition plus equals, and I can do that. And so I can also do, what did I not show you guys? I can do division. I can do division equals, which these both should just give me zero because when you divide integers, if there's any decimal, the decimal just gets chopped off and it just becomes an integer, which is a solid number. If you cared about the fraction or the decimal, you would want to use double float because that's how you represent fractions. Those are the data types that you use. So I get zero for both of them because they're both doing the same thing. So we we know about um, we know about uh, you know how to do this simple equals operation. But what if I have number, and what if I wanted to quickly add to number? So we learned that the shortcut for that in our for loop video is number plus plus. That is an easy way to add one to something and assign it to number. So it does all that for us. And that's because adding something is so often done in C++ that they made this shortcut for us. Also, if I wanted to decrement or minus something by one very quickly, I can do Subtract, I can do minus minus, and that will simply do something else. But maybe if you read if you read a lot in the book, you will learn that you can also put the minus minus before the number. And just to show you guys, um, if I run this, they'll both do the same thing. Um, zero is zero is popped out because I'm minusing one by zero, and you can't see any clear effect. And why is it asking me to save that? So, but what if I put the minus minus right here. Zero should still get printed out, right? And if I look at the output, the output is one. Now that is something very careful to understand. Even though I have a minus minus right here, nothing changed. And don't worry, there was no build error or anything. This wasn't the previous printout. This is correct. The minus minus did not change the value. And that's because w the position of the minus minus, whether it's before the variable name or after the variable name or before it or after it, makes a difference. It makes a serious difference in, in these cases. So what the minus minus what the minus minus does is if it's before the variable name, the if it's before the variable one, that's saying the decrement before you evaluate this variable. So in this line, this C out, this printout, the variable number eventually gets evaluated. And this minus minus is saying, okay, before you evaluate number, I want you to subtract one from it. So I'm going to subtract 1, and then I'm going to evaluate number. So number was 1, I subtract 1, and then it becomes 0. So as you can see here, I ran it, and it gave me 0. 
Now, if I put the minus minus after it in this kind of thinking, if it's afterwards, it says, it's saying, okay, I want you to evaluate what number is, and then afterwards, you're going to you're going to decrement number. So number, whatever number is, will be the will be printed out, and then afterwards, it will finally decrement it. So number will not change as I showed in the previous example. It is set to one. And just to prove this is happening, I will do a, I will print out number right after I do that without ch changing anything, just to show that it went from one to zero. So see, I have the minus minus up here, but it printed out one in the first line, and then in the number. I have zero and because it did decrement so the and again I can do this with the increment operator as well it works the same thing they just do different fundamental things they add or subtract and in this case I get one and two because I'm adding instead of subtracting so the plus plus is kind of a cool example to see the plus plus and subtraction is you kind of see it it's kind of cool coding it's a way to be able to really think about things on the fly so it's possible that I could do a while, I could do a while loop while number is less than 10 and then I could see out these two numbers. Uh, I'm going to cut it out, put it right here, control, I'm going to format it. And now, as you can see here, I'm going to print out number. I'm going to do this all in one line. I'm going to print out number and then increment it. So let's run it and I won't get an infinite loop. And see, I just printed out the numbers 1 through 10. I printed them out and did the increment in one line. So that was pretty efficient, as you say. And see what happens if I do the plus plus beforehand. So I printed out 1 through 9 last time. What's going to happen if I do this? I'm going to print out 2 through 10 because I'm adding it, I'm adding it before I change the numbers. So 1 goes to 2. And then 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, and then eventually 9 goes to 10, and then the loop stops. So that's pretty cool. So when this loop, this loop will run one last time when it's 9, but I'll increment it to 10, and then it will print out, and then number will be 10, and it, will, it won't stop. So that's pretty cool. So another quick application of this is that in my for loop, let's say I have a for loop called int i, i is less than 20. Um, so I showed you those cool operators. So instead of the i++, which you always see, you could do i plus equal to 2. So it goes 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So it prints out all the even numbers. If I made this 1, it would print out all the odd numbers. It would go 1, 3, 5, 7, iteratively. So that's pretty cool. I could also do times equals. So it goes 1, so it goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and then the loop is done. So that's pretty cool. So that's where you can see, you can apply these operations and see them work out, such as the minus equals. So these operations are pretty good to master and definitely make sure you play with them and fully understand the plus plus and minus minus operator. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you later.